Let's take something to bits, and I think this mini heater looks good because it says the newly designed unique mini heater. Mini heater allows you to enjoy the infinite pleasure, and I want infinite pleasure, albeit that it's from a heater. The label looks as though it's been peeled off because I have peeled the label off to see what's underneath. The dimensions have changed, apparently. The new label has bigger dimensions. It's a deeper heater, and it makes me wonder if they've had a little thermal issue with a previous thinner version. Uh, do not get too close to the fire or heat. Uh, where, where's the other things? Multicolour optional. Enjoy the fun. And one of the best bits, patent product. No copy allower. So don't copy it. It's patented. It's a heater. So we'll pop the case open, the box. And, of course, I chose the pink one. I don't know if it... Uh, it Certainly shows a range of colours, but you only get one. It's not like you can theme it to yourself. I don't think you can theme it. No, there's nothing in the box. It's got instructions in Chinese. Which show pretty pictures. And give the data uh, with the old dimensions on it. So this thing is supposedly rated about 130 watts. We'll test that by the look of it. Um, I can see if we look in the end here that you can see that slight sort of zigzaggy metal strip that suggests PTC heating elements. So sort of self-regulate, and that's probably one of the safety features. And a little axial blower. Is that the correct term for these things? Axial, I can never remember. Snail blower, side blower, whatever. It comes with a cable in a slightly grubby box. Blech. And it's a two-prong cable. Which is kind of, notice the prongs are the same size. This, I believe, is a popular Chinese cable. So before I plug this in, I really suppose I should get the power analysis equipment set up. So I shall grab the hoppy, but I shall also grab this meter, because this meter has the advantage that you can set it to log maximum power. So I shall plug the hoppy into it first. And it will, of course, read the hoppy's own power consumption. That'd be quite interesting to see, actually. Let me just move some of the stuff that is wanting to join us on the bench here. So, at the moment, uh, 1.1 watts. The hoppy does not draw a lot of power at all. 244 vo volts is our supply. 11 milliamps current. That's really low. And here is the high setting, which is currently showing 1.1. So, when I plug this in, is it going to power straight up? Nope, going to have to push that button. So it peaked at 1,000 watts, 1 kilowatt, when it was actually in its cold state. Um, what's it currently running at? The power is shown here. It's gradually creeping down as it warms up um, because it is one of those PTC heating elements. 0.7 amps. They said 0.6. The power factor is 0.95. That's because it's mainly a resistive heating element. Oh, a slight vibration off this. Uh, plus there'll be a power supply for the fan itself. So how is the heat coming out of it? Settled down to about 100 and, well, 160 watts. I guess that the temperature of the room will affect that. It's putting out quite a bit of heat. It's actually not too bad. That's okay. I mean, it's not something that you'd heat the room with, but if you're at your table and you just wanted to heat your hands, I don't think it'd be any good for heat shrink. I suppose I could find out if it's any good for heat shrink. Here is heat shrink. I don't think it's going to get anywhere near hot enough for heat shrink. No, I don't think so. Oh, actually, you know what? The heat shrink is starting to go, but really it's not the sort of thing that you're going to get much done in a hurry. Hmm... It is having an effect on it, though. Um, there's the fan running underneath. It's got a little red LED to show you that it's on, as if heat coming out the front wasn't bad enough. What happens when I just place it straight down and block the air intake? Which it says you've not to do. The power consumption is dropping rapidly. It's 91 watts. 88, 85, 82... Theoretically, as this uh, the PTC heating element heats up, it should sort of stabilise. 71 watts is still quite high for something that's unventilated. I wonder if the plastic would malform after a while. It does apparently have heat-resistant plastic inside. Look at the instructions. 
Everything's cut out. The heat element has cut out completely now. The fan's still running though. Is it going to cut back in or have I killed a thermal fuse? Let's let it cool down by running its fan for a while and see if that kicks back in. It may not. I may already have killed this product. Or it may take a while for it to reset. It's still quite warm. Maybe there's a thermal fuse. Hopefully it's a bimetallic strip that just cuts out. But uh, if it's not, then we're screwed. It's dead, but it doesn't really matter. I'm opening it anyway. I could always change the thermal fuse if a thermal fuse has gone. I heard a click and it suddenly peaked and the power is back up and running. So it has a thermal cutout, a mechanical one inside. Okay, that's fine. Let us turn it off and open it up. I should get rid of our paraphernalia here. over there. Now, I don't see screws, but I'm guessing it opens from the top. And the fact that the cover can have its colour changed, I wonder if this pops out. I shall pop that cable out of the way. Is this going to pop out revealing... Oh, it's sticky. Oh, it's just a sticky label. That's not nice. Covering screws. Okay, that's not nice. Oh, let's just peel it off. That's a bit tacky, but hey, it doesn't really matter. I got this to take to bits, so we could see what's inside. Its base colour is apparently black. Here's the screws. Six screws, I was really just expecting one at each corner. Now, is it going to be a capacitive dropper that's powering the fan? It's not super high power, or is it going to be a little switch mode power supply? Hard to say. Um. When it cut out thermally, the power really went down very low. That's quite a tricky one. I'm going to guess capacitive dropper, but I could be wrong. It's a capacitive dropper. Not much to it. There is the bimetallic cutout. Is there also a one-shot thermal fuse? Is this red hot? It's, yeah, it's pretty hot. Uh, let's slide this little cover out. Oh, this is all built into one little module. There is the bimetallic cutout. I do not see a one-shot thermal fuse. They've hedged their bets there. I recognise that style of motor. Uh, this looks like the standard little dinky cassette type motor, or CD type motor, I suppose I should say. And they're usually very low power. I wonder what it would actually take to power that. We know roughly what it sounded like. I could I could hotwire this fan and I could power it from a bench power supply and we could see what sort of voltage and speed gets involved. So I'll turn this way down to about 2 volts. Stick that on there, assuming that's the correct polarity because you know what these Chinese manufacturer like sometimes they aren't... Yeah, let's whip this circuit board out first then before I do that. That would be a good idea. Just in case they've told little polarity porkies. Red isn't always red. Black is not always black. Never trust anything like this. Particularly when there's a fat electrolytic capacitor there just waiting to go kaboom. So is this going to come out? It's the LED that's stopping it from coming out. Does this fan know this fan housing is pretty much permanently and this is not wanting to come out. That LED is being particularly irksome. There we go. Uh, red is going to capacitor negative. And black is going to positive. So that would have blown up that capacitor if I had just hot wired it there. In a way I should just have done that, shouldn't I? But not to worry. So, is there also a possibility that uh, this capacitor is charged up to a very high level? I see a discharge resistor across it. Let's test that by giving it the finger test. No, it's discharged. That's the drop capacitor there. It's rated 1 microfarad. Okay, that's what you'd expect. 
I don't see a bridge. Oh, I do see a bridge rectifier. There's a bridge rectifier. There's a bridge rectifier. There's a little resistor there for the um, LED. What's that other big diode for? The diode is. Uh, oh, it looks like a zener. It looks like a big fat zener diode or zener diode, if you prefer, just to clamp that voltage down. Okay, so that gives us something to hook our meter on our power supply onto. So I'll put the positive out of there. Oh, screw it. I'll just go straight onto the fan. Mumble, mumble, ramble, ramble, poke, fumble, fumble. Actually, that's that's at two volts. I think that's a three volt fan that only takes about 80 milliamps. I wonder what the Zener's rated at. Hmm. Um, not an awful lot inside. Tell you what, I shall pause momentarily. I shall reverse engineer this. I shall try and work out that Zener voltage rating is by possibly just turn the voltage up to see what it, or powering this up and just seeing that, and then again, there's a heat, f heater floating about here, but it will give me an indication of what that is. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's go over the circuitry. So it starts off with the incoming supply. It can be either polarity because it's not a polarized plug. Goes through a fuse. Then it goes to the switch, this simple click on, click off switch. And then it splits two ways. One side of it goes down to the heating element, which is a PTC block. It's the classic thing that has the... Uh, it's got a ceramic block in the middle with the sort of fins on either side, and the fins actually make electrical connection. One would be live, one would be the neutral, and they go onto either side of these uh, metalised faces of these ceramic blocks, and those uh, are PTC, positive temperature coefficient, uh, blocks as they heat up the the resistance rises and they sort of self-regulate that's why it starts off with a bit of a peak of current it also has the little thermal switch in line with it the bimetallic switch so that's shown here it's shown as this resistor with the little radiator fins on it and it's shown as the thermal switch here that's a sort of safety cutout then it goes through this big red capacitor here which is one microfarad 400 volts and there's a 2 mega ohm resistor across that's quite high, unusually high. It's absolutely fine for that, though. Technically speaking, it's also got this heating element across it. So the only point you'd ever get a tingle off the plug uh, if that resistor wasn't there is if the, the unit overheated and the fan was still running, but this uh, thermal switch opened and then there'd be no real load across it and you could get a slight tingle. Um, the... Supply then goes, the current limited by that uh, capacitor, people ask how the capacitor dropper works. It allows a certain amount of charge on each half cycle to be transferred. So that sort of has a sort of, it has a shuffling effect and that gets rectified. So on each half wave, it just basically pumps a little bit of current to this uh, capacitor. And it just, it, the value of that capacitor there determines how much current gets through on each half wave. So on the output of that, there is a 100 nanofarad little ceramic disc capacitor tucked way down in here. And that uh, is just for noise suppression. It's right across the output of the bridge rectifier, just the diode switching noise. Not that it's going to be an awful lot, although it also has the advantage that it's across the fan. So that's also going to reduce the brush noise. There is an electrolytic capacitor, the 470 volt 35, uh, 470 microfarad 35 volt. Then there's a little red LED token gesture because it's got a 1K resistor and it turns out that although this is a big chunky 12 volt Zener diode or Zener diode, 1N5349B, it's uh, quite, it's rated for 5 watts. I don't actually see that given its size, but uh, it's a 12 volt Zener diode. It's never going to conduct unless this motor here goes open circuit, the fan motor, which is tucked into the casing. It just sits in the back here and uh, it's... Uh, draws enough current that the it balances with this capacitor letting through just enough current that this will sit down to about 3.6 volts. The fan will draw as much as it can. So the voltage, it starts quite slowly and then comes up and uh, it levels off about 3.6 volts. 
The polarity was wrong for a reason. The polarity is the polarity markings for direction on the motor, and they obviously wanted the fan blade to go in the other direction so that as it spins round, it throws the air out from this blade. Uh, if it was going the opposite direction, it would be pulling air in the way instead. That wouldn't be too good, given that it's a heater. Uh, that's fundamentally it. It's a very, very simple circuit. It's basically just the fuse switch, the heating element with its own protective element, and then just a simple capacitive dropper and smoother powering the motor. And the way this thing goes together is quite neat. It's quite a, a modular design. Let's uh, get this out the way here. This is where I completely wreck the exposure. No, it, it's quite white. That's the problem with white objects. Uh, but the assembly is such that this fan blade just goes on and you don't want to push it on too far. I'd guess that one of the things that could go wrong with this is that if this was pushed on too far, it could stall against the back of the housing. And likewise, this cover goes in the front and it just clips in. It hooks under like this. I've just popped the wires off. That's all right. And uh, it snaps in like that. And as long as the blade can still spin, it's clear that that's fine. I could see that if... Sometimes over time, uh, the blades will move on the fan shaft and the motor shaft. And if that happens, you can end up with it touching one side, making a sort of noise. That's when people would just throw it out because it was making noise. Interestingly, I thought that this might have had a little extra feature. I thought that when this was sat in, because it kind of does, it kind of sits behind those clips. I thought it might stop it being unclipped as a wee safety feature, but it doesn't quite make it there. So it's just, uh, it looked like it did that, but it doesn't. The heating element sits in with these lugs. There's two in that side, there's one in that side. These are the connections that are going onto those uh, metal plates. So these fins are effectively live when it's in situ, when it's powered. Oh, uh, another thing. This little grill is actually integrated into the heater module itself. This basically just feeds down from the top and those little plates go through the bottom and then one of them just folds over like that to lock it in place. The other one wasn't really folded over. I don't think it really matters that much. I shall fold it over a little bit. But that then sits down into the end here. And that's it sitting flush with the front of the unit. That's what you see when the lid's on. Uh, the circuit board just sits in the back, clips in quite neatly a couple of screws. These wires go onto the motor. And that is fundamentally it. When it's clipped together, when you push that button, it just runs. And that's it. The fan runs and blows air through that element and it will self-regulate. If the air in the room was too hot, that uh, element would just regulate the power down a bit. And I'm guessing that the main safety features in this are... The fact that the element is self-regulating, that this plastic is that hard, heat-resistant plastic. It's notable that the uh, connections are actually screwed onto nuts and bolts in this little thermal thing. I think this is just a standard module, but it still means that it does rely on the plastic as one of the sort of grips for that. Uh, if the plastic's softened in any way, though it shouldn't if it's that hard thermal plastic, um, then it kind of it could result in these terminals going loose. Don't know. But that's the only protection other than the self regulating facility and the thermal cutout. I'm not sure how long it would how it would last in a you know, if you had it face down, for instance, with the heat going up the way into the fan blades, I don't know if it would distort them. There's a good chance it could damage it that way and then it just really wouldn't work, it would just keep cutting and out. But this is quite useful. It cost about ten pounds from my UK warehouse. Obviously, it's a Chinese seller, but it's from a UK warehouse. And uh, I could see it being quite useful just as a source of low-level warm air for some application like preheating something or perhaps um, drying small items. Just, you know, something you could sit on its own with that little stand or even just sit it up vertically and it would just blow that stream of air into an enclosure or something like that. So quite useful for the components themselves. Um, the little fan, the blower, but more importantly, the PTC heating element here. I have ordered another one. Um, it's apparently a bit higher power. The other one I've ordered is notable for all the pictures on the listing of flames, which isn't very good. But um, it's uh, supposedly 500 watts. And it looks like two of those elements are maybe even three stacked and then maybe a traditional fan behind them. So that'll be interesting to see when I get that. But in the meantime, this is the was pink one, but is now stealth black uh, as a little plastic combustible heater that looks okay. But 
I just you never know how trustworthy these things are, <clears throat> how reliable that heating thing, the thermal cutout is going to be. Usually they have the <clears throat> in bigger heaters they have a one shot thermal fuse as a last resort. They may have left that out just in case um, you know it does trigger for some reason without before that the plastic would really have been damaged and it just renders the product unusable. But there we go. It's an interesting little thing. It does look like it would have its uses, but not something I'd want to leave totally unattended. Other things worthy of note here. It does have these little channels. It's not uncommon, but it's quite nicely done in this instance. It's got the little channels that support the wires, and because they are that sort of fiberglass coated wire, it does fit in quite snugly into those. It holds it well. It looks like a fair amount of effort has gone into the design of this. So the unit is now back together. Um, oh, also worth mentioning is the plastic on this not only holds the button in position, but also holds this socket in position so that when you're plugging the, uh, well, the built-in plug, so when you're plugging the connector into it, it uh, it's not going to flex it backwards and forwards too much and damage the solder joints. But that is the thing built back together. Again, I'll just plug it in. You can, well, I don't know if you'll see anything. The fan is running. The heat is coming out the front. You'll maybe just have to believe this because uh, it's quite a quiet little thing. It doesn't make much noise at all. But uh, that's it back together. And I'll just put the lid on and that'll be it. But it's actually quite nicely made. It is a neat design.